Uh, it's a two player game. Each player has three actions and we repeat this game only twice. So in period zero, they simultaneously choose the actions and then they observe. And then in period one, Again, they simultaneously choose their actions, A, B, C, A, B, C, and then they, uh, the, the game is over, all right? So in this game, twice repeated, let's suppose there's a discount factor as well, delta for both players, which is some number between zero and one. And so uh, the question is, uh, can action profile AA be part of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, okay? Uh, well, you may say, well, I don't know. Depends on whether AA is in Nash equilibrium or not. Well, first of all, what are the Nash equilibrium of this game? There are three. The first one is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, where player uh, one and two are choosing C and C, right? Because, so let's calculate, given player one plays A, the best response is C. If he's playing B, best response is B. If he's playing C, best response is C again. If player two is playing C, the best response is C. If player two is playing B, best response is B. And if he is playing A, the best response is C. So as you see, there are two pure strategy Nash equilibrium. These are the Nash equilibrium outcomes. So B, B and uh, C, C, these are pure Nash equilibrium. Well, what about the mixed strategy Nash? Well, there's a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. It's basically a randomization between B and C, one over four, four over five. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, either uh, one over four or one over four, three over four, I guess. Uh, but it's going to be a randomization between B, C and B, C for both players. Uh, part of the reason is that the A is a weakly dominated strategy. If you look, C is weakly dominating. I mean, it's weakly because it's, it, both strategy gives zero, zero here, but otherwise C is giving strictly higher payoff than A. Uh, same for player two, by the way. A is weakly dominated by C, all right? Uh, but clearly AA is an, uh, you know wonderful payoff, right? It's higher than 1-1, one, one, higher than 3-3. Three, three. And uh, by the way, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is even lower than these guys. And so 4-4 four, four is like a, a, you know beautiful outcome, but it is not a Nash equilibrium. Question is, can we support uh, some non-Nash uh, action profile uh, in equilibrium, in a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? And the answer is yes, we may. Um, but for this, the important thing is, trust me, is that the game should have at least two Nash equilibrium strategy profile other than, you know, this. I mean, this is not Nash. So if the game has more than one pure strategy or maybe a mix, but uh, Nash equilibrium, well, then we may support an action profile which is non-Nash. How come? Well, here is the strategy profile. Um, I am going to define it as a profile, not per individual, uh, per player, I mean. So here is the strategy profile. In period zero, play uh, AA, -A, meaning player one is going to choose A, player two is going to choose A. This is what they are going to do in period zero. In period one, play CC if period zero was AA, right? They can observe it. Otherwise, play BB, okay? So remember, that's it. That's, that's a complete strategy profile. How do I know it? Uh, this strategy profile tells what each player is going to do after every possible history in this game. If you want to know about, you know, what the uh, histories are in this game, there are a lot of them, right? The one of them is the null history, the beginning of the game. Another one is AA. So this is one history with length. Remember, this is like uh, uh, A1, all right? So another history is AB. Another history is a C. Another history is, uh, I don't know, BB. All right, so there are many of such. And then 
there are histories, well, these are non-terminal histories, obviously, and then the terminal histories, for example, AA, AA, all right? So this is A0, this is A1. Um, yeah, well, uh, I thought, I mean, the previous lecture, we denoted this like A0, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, this is not A0, this is A1, this is A2, okay? Um, uh, sorry for the mix-up, and, and, or, I don't know, AA, BB, etc. So, BB, sorry. So, there's, you know, a bunch of other uh, histories as well. So, in this game, there are a lot of histories. What I am saying here is that, uh, claiming here is that this strategy tells each player what to do after every history. Try to make sure about this, all right? And for any game, try to make sure that your definition, your description of strategy tells players what to do after every possible history. Here, for example, what does this strategy tell us? Well, for example, in period zero, I mean, after this history, it says uh, they're gonna play AA. All right, very good. But there are a bunch of other histories, for example, after AA. Well, it says if the first period, uh, outcome was AA, meaning uh, this, well, then they're going to play CC. Good. But what about this? Well, if the first period outcome is AB, well, they're going to play BB. Well, what about this? Well, they're going to play BB. What about this? They're going to play BB, according to the, that strategy profile. You see what I mean? Well, what about this? A, 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 A. Well, these are terminal histories. Remember, the game is over there. So the strategy doesn't specify anything because uh, there's no actions available for players. It's, it's the end of the game. So uh, why this strategy is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? Well, it is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, obviously, if the discount factors are high enough. Usually, this is the case in repeated games. Um, well, how high? Uh, we can find the threshold for delta. How? Well, remember, so here what we are going to do, we are going to use the uh, one deviation property because trust me, it's going to make our life much easier. So how can I do that? Well, simple. You first uh, look at, uh, I mean, take any history, H. Uh, obviously, this is H slash Z, all right? So non-terminal history. And then the question is S, I, H, and uh, S, S, S1, H, S2, H. The continuation strategy is this an Nash equilibrium. All right, hmm. so remember, this is the strategy uh, S, uh, sigma or S, let's call it S, because this is a pure strategy. And so what is the continuation strategy uh, after any history? Hmm. Well, remember, there are two continuation strategies, either CC, so this is either CC or BB, depending on the history. Well, question is, are those continuation strategies Nash equilibrium in that subgame? Meaning, remember, in periods t equals zero, they get together, they play this game, and then they learn the outcome. There are obviously one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, so nine possible outcomes. And then depending on the, I mean, it could be A, 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 B, A, C, and then B, A, B, 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 C, and then C, A, C, B, C, C. So nine possible outcomes. And then they observe those outcomes and then they play it again. All right. So something like this. Well, here it says, depending on the history, they're going to play either C, C in some of those uh, sub games or B, B. Well, the thing is, both CC and BB are obviously Nash equilibrium of these of these subgames because the subgames are always, uh, as you see, the the stage game itself. So both of them are uh, Nash equilibrium. Cool. Well, now take history. So there's only one more history I need to check, which is the null history, right? Because here. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, here, all the histories where the continuation strategy is CC or BB, those are the histories I, I, I sort of considered here. What about the history, the null history? What is the continuation strategy? Uh, so S, 
H, which is the null. What is it? Well, it is the S itself, right? So the question is, is it a Nash equilibrium of the game itself? Uh, well, all right, let's check that one. How do we do that? Uh, so let's do it here. We don't really need too much space. So now we are going to use the one deviation property. Well, what is player one's payoff on their strategy S? Well, simple, they're going to play A and A. So player one is going to get four in period one. And then in period two, he's going to get, remember, because they played A, A, he's going to get three. So it's three delta. This is his payoff. What about his payoff? Under, obviously, S2, the S1, one deviation. Huh. So remember, according to one deviation property, when we check subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we do not have to worry about all possible deviations of player one. We only need to look at the one deviations, meaning player one is playing something different in the first period and then play according to this strategy in the second period, meaning in the rest of the game. So in this game, how many, uh, how should I say it, uh, one deviation strategies are there? Well, two. In period one, he could play B or he could play C, right? So the thing is, obviously, playing B in the first, whatever you play in the second round, you are going to, be, I mean, they are, the players are going to be playing B, B. So whether he, the player one, plays B or C, the second period, they're going to play B, B, and so his payoff is going to be delta times one. Well, what about his best payoff here? Well, B is clearly less than C, so if he wants to deviate uh, in period one, well, he better deviate to C, all right? Something different than A. Well, so he's going to get five in period one and then delta times one. So that's it. There's, we just need to consider one deviation strategies. And out of those, there are two of them. We don't really need to look at the deviation of a deviation to B because zero is worse than five. So we just need to look at the deviation to C in the first period. Well, obviously we want this strategy to be Nash equilibrium of the entire game. And so this is what we should have. Well, the payoff here is four plus three delta. The payoff here is five plus delta. So if you do the math, this is one greater than or equal to two delta. So delta is greater than or equal to one half. So if delta is greater than or equal to one half for player one, he doesn't have any incentive to deviate. Okay, well, what about player two? Well, the player two, everything is symmetric, right? If you do the calculations from the second player's point of view, strategy is symmetric payoffs are symmetric, you're going to find exactly the same thing. So that means what? If delta is greater than or equal to, oh, I'm sorry, 1 over 2, then S is in fact an S, P, N, E. That's it.